Well, we're here in this incredible exhibition of Gennady Ivanov's paintings in the Hall Street Norwich Cathedral. And uh, I just came in to visit uh, this uh, from Canada, and it's, it's so uh, compelling to see these uh, iconic Canadian landscapes in such a beautiful place, but also uh, a terrible beauty uh, to everything that we see here, uh, because the scientific message is, is a grim one. Uh, we developed a tremendous understanding of these environments and now are apprehending the rapid changes uh, that they're undergoing, which is making them unrecognizable within our lifetimes. And uh, Gennady has captured this uh, so beautifully here in such a compelling way. Uh, it, uh, you feel it in your heart as well as in your head. And, and uh, so I'm very grateful that uh, this has happened and uh, I expect this is just a start. Thank you. Thank you. So this station it was set up in 1998, and the instruments were all set well above the shrub heights. So the shrub heights would have been down, down in here at that time. And, uh, and then came back a few years later, and we had a camp nearby. And I'm sitting at the camp and looking at the station, and I'm going, why did I set the station up like this? This is absurd. I would, why did I put the instruments measuring radiation, wind speed, temperature in the shrub canopy? That makes no sense at all. And then my colleague said, John, you didn't. And then we dug through photographs and... and yeah, we, we got the photographs. Yeah, you know, the photographs and proved it. We set this up very sensibly at the time. And in fact, we measured vegetation rates. And so, so now we're looking uh, almost 25 years later at this time and the, uh, the station itself is being overwhelmed by shrubs. Mm -hmm. It's ending up under what is literally a forest canopy. Yeah. And, that, and that's a rapid rate of growth for this part of Canada. Okay. It's a uh, rapid rate in any part of the world. This is not a forest. This is not a forested area. This is Arctic tundra uh, becoming forest. Yeah. What do what do you think of the way in which Gennady has put these? You know, what can be seen as sort of black seeds? I don't it's think they are black seeds. It's, 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 it's the black yeah. seeds and also the blackness of the willows themselves, mm -hmm. which had that. But uh, but I, I love it how he captured uh, the flame. The the, uh, the willows become very red in spring as they as they come to life and. And it's almost like flames in this case, uh, which it is in a sense, uh, because this is this is where we can see climate warming, and this is where we can see perhaps the destruction of the uh, of the science that might help us through this. And, and to my mind, this this is a, a, a way in which um, an indication of the way in which this you know, this project is being successful. There, there's a genuine exchange between Gennady, the artist, and scientists. Right, right. I mean, this is this is a place where. Um, Sometimes you have moments where the horror of what's happening hits you. This is one of the places where we realized, you know, this is not just model outputs and graphs and things like that, and then it gets you in your gut that uh, something you built has changed completely. Yeah. And so uh, to be able to share that with the public and, uh, and for the public to, uh, to share that moment of discovery behind this beautiful Mount Lorne, behind it with its still high snow fields existing, uh, but clearly melting permafrost along its sides and uh, the threat coming there as well is particularly powerful. So I can already saw, saw this uh, location in April, uh, yes. 25 years ago. What would this location have looked like? It would have been very, very white. Mm -hmm. uh, any shrubs uh, would be buried under the snow. Uh, in fact, when they, uh, during the winter, the shrubs uh, collect snow on the branches and they bend over. And so they appear much shorter than they actually are. So, uh, but this is um, 
winter would still be April uh, a few years ago, and the uh, people would be riding snow machines, skidoos, up until early May in this area. So it was uh, remarkable, in fact, to, uh, to not have that in, in early mid-April this year. So should Gennady go back in a few years' time when the shrubs are up there? Yeah, yeah, you have to periodically visit this and uh, wow. uh, yeah. this, this station will be able to leave as is Very. Uh, forever. <laughs> For real. So do you, do you use this station? Come by and say, well, there's a yeah. tall forest here. Why would they have put a short little weather <laughs> station out here yeah. under a tall forest? Much as uh, you can go into New England now <laughs> and find stone walls in the forest and say, what happened here? Mm. Is it is still working station? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's still working, and uh, Wolf Creek is still carrying on. Mm -hmm. um, so we're uh, uh, about 28 years of measurements. At but you decided not to cut off uh, around uh, no, no, we're, the shrubs. Yeah. Let this develop. As oh, yeah, we want to yeah. see how. It's, okay. yeah. so. That's great. So, so it's part of a kind of practice. Yeah, yeah. study to understand. Yeah. yeah. So good job on this one, Gennady. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. scientists set up weather stations like this. But scientists very rarely set weather stations in places like this. Um, normally it's a mown grass and next to an airfield in a valley bottom in the mountains or something. This is up on a mountain top on a ridge called Fortress Ridge. And the mountain here is called the Fortress. Uh, there's a uh, former glacier back in here, uh, which is now gone. And I think you've captured that very well, the loss of that. Uh, there's a bit of a uh, debris covered glacier and rock glacier left over. But it's a deglaciated landscape. That glacier disappeared within living memory. Uh, an older resident of the area remembered when there was ice there. And uh, this environment as a whole has had um, three to four degrees of winter warming since the 1960s. And at the lowest elevations, the snowpacks have dropped to half of what they were in the 1960s. At the high elevations, it hasn't lost snow yet. It's still a very windy, snowy place. Um, but our models running forward for this area uh, predict by the end of the century another month and a half of summer here. And, uh, and so we're trying to calculate what the vegetation will do in this area. But our expectation is that um, some of the trees uh, will suffer from drought and have some dieback, but other species that are more able to withstand drought uh, will see forestation and uh, movement of forests up into this uh, landscape here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is um, this environment is also very, very important because uh, these are the headwaters of major rivers that provide drinking water and um, agricultural irrigation water and water for hydropower uh, for the whole Pacific Northwest of the United States and for Western Canada. Mm -hmm. So uh, from Manitoba west to British Columbia, from Montana to Idaho to Washington State, and even the power, the hydropower generator from places like this powers places as far south as California. And so the, uh, the whole Western North American economy is dependent upon the snow and ice resources in this area and the water that comes from these places. So we, we call them sometimes the water towers of the world. And, and what better water tower could you have than the fortress? So, uh, and is it, isn't it interesting how, how this tower, the automatic weather station, adds to the drama of the painting? It, it, it does, and that, that's an interesting way. Um, the, uh, in, in a sense, we have a tower with a tower. Yeah, um, yeah. But we, we have this uh, spindly human tower next to this grand natural tower. And uh, this almost looks like a, something we dropped on Mars or something like that. <laughs> 
I, I think we have to make sure that we're not the Martians on our own planet. That we're, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, was talk, I was talking to a visitor to the um, exhibition a couple of days ago, and she, she wasn't a, a scientist, but she said this was her favourite painting because of, because of the drama. But she described this as the, the sort of forbidding mountain in the background with this weird superstructure in front of it. So your automatic weather station is this weird superstructure. People also recognize this landscape because it's shown up in various movies. So if you, just over the hill here is a Tibet, Tibetan chortern made of styrofoam that was used for filming seven years in Tibet. Um, the, uh, in the movie Inception, uh, the fortress shows up. Uh, there's a Planet of the Apes movie showing the last stand of the humans against the apes at the base of the fortress. Uh, on and on and on, a new Liam Neeson uh, movie. Uh, the Revenant, uh, a lot of the Revenant battles were, were filmed here. So it's, a, it's, it's imprinting itself on humanity's psyche as a movie backdrop. And again, because of its grandeur. And they, they actually, uh, they Photoshop, they uh, use CGI to take out these weather stations in these movies. Uh, but there's a uh, battle in the uh, Revenant that occurs beside another weather station. Uh, that was cleverly removed by CGI effects from the uh, fur trade movement. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to get the original film without without it, without the automatic weather station being removed. Yeah, that's possible. You see these people in furs fighting <laughs> themselves, <laughs> fighting the and I've been yeah, I've been looking lots of lots of um, well paintings, Canadian paintings, and I realized uh, actually non artists. Well, it's probably. Maybe just a couple painted uh, anything with weather stations or scientist stations because it's probably not sexy and not uh, you know lens not belongs to landscape and this is absolutely this what I, I this about who's ever painted a, exactly uh, yeah. a science research station like this yeah here. and it's, I think this is very quite unique what we're doing actually yeah, in, in my and it's in the history it will be in hundred years it will be very very. Well, that's Interesting. The other thing, you know, the Revenant, that was Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, despite his public statements, completely ignored the science that was going on around there. He not only CGI'd things out, he disturbed our snowpack and wrecked our experiment that winter uh, for a filming scene. So they, there was a forest clearing, and he decided, with very deep snow, with a weather station in the middle of it, he decided uh, that the snow was too deep, so they plowed it out, and then they brought trees in and filled the trees. Uh, clearing with trees, All right. and it's uh, and they, they took this right up to the edge of the weather station, which I'd asked them oh, really? to not All disturb. Right. And then they borrowed our sleds and wrecked them. So that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, most. Chancellor for Research and Director of the Climate Research Unit at the UEA have combined to represent the aspects of climate change and its impacts in visual art in order to increase awareness in a wider section of people. They have just returned from Canada, a country which is amongst those most greatly affected by climate change. And our reporter Amy Beth Stedman went along to the exhibition to find out how it went.
Transitions is an interdisciplinary project creating a fusion between science and art, highlighting the impacts of climate change. I thought it would be a good idea for Gennady to see a dramatic landscape where there are dramatic impacts from climate change. Got in touch with my colleague John Palmer, who worked with me at the University of East Anglia many years ago, about whether it would be possible for Gennady to join a research trip to Canada. They show me the problems and uh, main impacts on the climate change in Canada. It's actually what affected all the planet. So why Canada? Northwest Canada is one of the bellwether areas of the world. The, the rate of warming in Northwest Canada has been two or three times the average global warming. It's entirely important that Gennard, who did come and see what's involved in science research, it was equally important that we, the scientists, understood his methods and techniques. You know, how did he do things? In the words of David Attenborough, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of our natural world is on the horizon. It was quite disturbing and it's Yes, it was interesting. This is a science project and uh, it's expedition. I realize it's very impressive because we're losing uh, nature, we're losing uh, the animals, we're losing the beautiful world. Everything what's going on in social in nature is affecting us as well. The chief of the Guchin tribe has described a few days before we were there in April described the watching the impacts of climate change on his people as like watching a nuclear explosion in slow motion. It has that big an impact. Transitions is about raising awareness in a unique way that evokes emotive responses that sometimes science cannot. It's quite emotional in a way and, and a number of scientists have said that. Um, th those of us who've worked in this area, worked in this area for, for decades. Um, and, and interestingly, in this, uh, this is just this exhibition, there's a comments book, and they say the same thing. Wow, this is stunning. People said it's magnificent, and it's, it's really, really giving people to understand the depth of problem. Lots of scientists visiting as well, um, and they absolutely impressed and love it and they deeply deeply understand the problem everyone reading the, the captions and everyone said it's very clear and very understandable it's very very interesting 600 scientists in Canada have, have seen some examples of Canadi's work from the scientist's point of view it, that seems to have been successful how Canadi has visualized some of what he's seen makes sense to us from a science point of view. I have been struck by, by people coming up to me when I've been in this exhibition area saying I really hadn't understood what climate change was about until I saw these paintings. The project to increase public engagement by fusing art with the science of climate change runs until the 28th of July in the Norwich Cathedral, Hostry. From the 22nd until the 26th of July, transitions will also showcase at the Forum during the Young Norfolk Arts Festival, including 18 local artists. Because of the unprecedented access to a global network of climate scientists, there is a realisable prospect of the project growing and evolving for exhibitions around the world. Amy Beth Steadman, That's TV.